Hello, I'm Brad. And I'm Jason. You are listening to Dice, Dice in, in My Mind. So as we're talking here, there might be a little bit of background noise because um, here in the Midwest, the weather has finally gotten nice enough to open the windows. Momentarily. Momentarily. Because yeah. we have that, we have about that 30 to 45 day window where it's summer here. Um, and, um, but that being said, nothing is stopping us from continuing to talk about gaming nope. and, nope. um, and the people behind it and the people behind it. And there, that's the, and we're, we're going to continue that theme oh, yeah. today with a little background. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, what I, I was, Jason, and I text all the time. Um, I got and I think one of number. the things I told you, what was that? I, nothing. I just reminded myself to change my number. Keep going. Oh, yeah. Good. Nice try. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I just find it fascinating that I'm just drawn right now to certain arenas. Um, mm-hmm. One, sci-fi role-playing. And that's really because of the work you've done in game mastering Star Trek Adventures for us. The first time we've played it. Now we've gone through two missions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and man, and we they, are, they yeah. make it easy for us. Yeah, they do. And, yeah. and that will have this, what we're, we're recording this and sitting on it until for a couple of weeks, for a number of weeks, oh, actually. A- actually for a little better than a month. If we're, if we're honest, it's just the quirk of our production schedule this summer. Yeah. So by mm-hmm. the time you hear this, we will have played um, a couple games with Jason just completing. And then I'm prepping to game master the first yep. game with him. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Playing Star Trek Adventures, we'll have to talk about this later. We, it's been we just promise, an absolute by, blast. Yeah, by the time we get to episode 100, which is just around the corner, yeah, we will we will share our experiences of GMing and playing because we we haven't done that no. in like two years up until this summer, and it's been such a joy that we want to talk about it. Hopefully, get some more people gaming again. Yeah, and and I think I think briefly the fact of the matter is us going to a, a bi-weekly um mm-hmm. release schedule has given us that time to do it yeah we can breathe um, we can play absolutely yeah we can play and and obviously you know st- sta is on is is in play um fantasy age and modern age are mm-hmm. on the docket mm-hmm. and it's gonna take a little bit to ramp up another game came um we've both been familiar with the with traveler yeah that's a playing game yeah. familiar in the in the under the context that we knew what it was we, we were aware of it. of it you you've always known more than me well yeah th- not really i knew i knew just a little bit from my reading um well um, i finally picked up um the core rule book and it's the core rule book from Mongoose Publishing, the 2022 update. Yeah. First edition came out in 2008. Second edition, initial second edition came out in 2016. And then they released a new core rule book, 2022 update in 2022. That would make sense. Um, and the more I read it, you know this, the more <laughs> well, it goes, I was. It goes back to your opening of, I've been texting Jason constantly. Oh, yeah. And and a lot of it has been about Traveler. Yeah, I mean, literally the, the you know, f- those that may not necessarily harbor the same beliefs will, won't necessarily understand it. But it's like the heavens opened up and it was, oh, when I saw and I started reading this material. Yeah, um, you, you were. I mean, when it comes to when it comes to games, we both get our interests are kind of like a Venn diagram and mm-hmm. uh, as is everything else in the world. But m- 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 our two circles in this regard overlap pretty heavily. But there are a couple things that just get each of us really intrigued. And I don't I don't know. I don't know the last, I guess I do kind of know the last time. Um, the only time I've seen you this excited about a game, about a game you haven't even played yet yeah and the sun yet was um star trek adventures when we started looking carefully at that um modern age slash fantasy age when we started looking carefully at that you were so a twitter or a, a texter uh on both of those and and i hadn't seen that for a while and then with traveler that's all you've been talking about yeah i'm just it, the 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 depth of it and obviously this came out it was developed by mark miller came out 77 
Um, there's been a GURPS version of it. There's been a number of mm -hmm. um, different publishing. Mongoose picked it up again and came out with their version in 2008. It is such a quality product. Mm -hmm. um, and we've been, we've been on this kick about RPG is lit. And yeah. as a sci-fi oh. nerd, it is an absolute blast to read it. If you are into world building, as are we. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I've literally barely broken the cover and just flipping through it's it's like well this is this is ridiculous this is there's so much there and it's yeah. so detailed and um i don't know check me on this one it seems um i don't know what else to, to say it seems more viscerally relatable like even looking at the starships it's like oh i could see that in space i could see being on that and someone was, I, there was a, I cannot remember the phrase and I'm going to have to go back and find it. Um, it was something along the lines of future capable is the term. Oh, and interesting. Is, is the sci-fi that you are reading um, something that seems we would be capable of doing in the future as a society now? Does it look like potentially a progression? So in other words, Star Wars yeah. necessarily isn't Not future so much. capable. I mean, I'm still learning to be a Jedi, but go on. Yeah, was it, you know, it's Star Trek. Yes, St I mean, but, it's designed to start. Right, it's Star Trek is, I mean, that's just the future I'm assuming is going to happen. What one hopes, big time. But Traveler doesn't have the gloss. Yes. Traveler it's, doesn't have that shiny patina to say, and everything's going to be great. Yeah, That. oh, that's exactly it. It's, it's even more future capable than... Then and that's not the right term, but no, I like it's it. Getting across. And, um, and not to say, sorry, and then I'll shut up. Yeah. But it's it's not dystopian. That's not what we're trying to say. No, at all. not at it all. It is in no way dystopian. No, and the best way to describe it for those that are listening that don't necessarily know about it, it's and and again, some people will take um, umbrage with with this analogy, but for many, this resonated with me. It is um, Star Trek meets Dune meets Firefly. Yeah, that's that's what you texted me. That I think that was the text where it's like, all right, yeah. I'm in. Let's see what this is about. Yeah, that, and, <laughs> and and you are much more much more reasonable when it comes to okay, are we really going to do this? And yeah. one of the things we've both been cleaning our shelves off, our and, bookshelves, and the, the our gaming bookshelves. And the irony is, you inspired me. You were like, I'm gonna get rid of. I'm gonna I'm gonna give away and or sell a whole bunch of this stuff I never really picked up. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah, that's a really good idea. Yeah, I mean, it, when it comes right down to it, a you know, let's be honest, 90 to 95% of my gaming is at this moment and won't necessarily change is with you. So what am I, what are we going to game? And if we're not going to game, then yep. someone else will benefit yep. from that. So um, I've got a stack of stuff. I'm going to move and I needed to make room for, for traveler and for, you know, the new star Trek stuff coming out lower decks. Um, yeah, which just as a friendly reminder, it has been available pre for pre-order for some time and yeah. should be, should be printing um, pretty soon. Just yep. saying. Yep. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think it, this is one of those games where, it's going to take a while. I've told this to you. It's going to take a while to understand it, to properly game master it. Um, I've oh, watched yeah. the glass cannon episodes mm -hmm. where they've played traveler. Um, you know, there are a number of people that produce yeah, yeah. good Everybody, information. Don't worry. Brad's not backing up. There's just a truck out the window. Oh yeah. See, there is <laughs> <laughs> again. I'm cause we're, we, that's one of the other things we're doing is I'm recording upstairs and normally I don't do that. Um, but we're recording in the middle of the day versus the evening. So I'm giving my wife clearance so she can actually you, do actual work. You have work. environmental affordances not typically available. Yes. So <laughs> yes. you get to hear, you get to hear Brad not only up. nature, but city, city nature. City well. nature. Yeah. yeah. Cause I'm, I'm right smack dab in the middle of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So <laughs> that being said, um, as the truck is backing up to pick up my recycle, um, I think we should go over the the really um, because of my interest in Traveler, yep. I went out to the forums and, yep. and found a post because Mongoose hosts their own forums um, called State of the Mongoose 2022. 
and um, it is um, written by um, you know managing director um, owner Matthew Sprange. Did I pronounce that right, Chase? Yep. Yep. Matthew okay. Sprange. Yep. Okay. We asked. We... So yes. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, Matthew. I just wanted to make sure I did it right. I don't want to insult. Um, that really caught my attention was um, how he p has positioned, is positioning, and will be positioning his company. And really the, the, the futurist look at how he wants that company to be going mm -hmm. forward and in perpetuity. Yeah. And it is very unique as someone who has been studying business for mm -hmm. decades. Um, yeah. The, the theory behind it, the actual practice of it is something that I'm looking for, you know, as I'm, as I'm yeah. doing my job search, well, it is very the, difficult to the find. The human, the human dignity behind it, right? Yes. That, that and this as is, soon as, this is different. And as soon as I sent that to you, we both agreed. We're like, oh, we need to have Matthew on. It's and, and we, and we, we had prepped him. I, you, you, one might say we had warned him before we clicked record that as much as we want to talk about mongoose and, and traveler and oh, paranoia, paranoia. Um, cause remember just because you're paranoid doesn't mean someone's not out to get you, but, but we'll do more. We'll do another session later. Uh, but seriously, uh, we had said, look, we want to talk about all that stuff, but we really want to know about you. And we really want to know about your thinking yeah. for this company. Cause that's what, I mean, the games are great, but that's what finally flipped our switch. So yeah. um, why don't we go over? Perfect. Let's roll. Matthew Sprange is co-founder and managing director of Mongoose Publishing, where he has been running the company for more than two decades. A game designer who has designed, authored, or edited more than 50 game products, Matthew also has magazine credits in Signs and Portents and several other popular publications. Matthew, thanks for joining us today. I have been, and Jason, we've been excited to talk to you about um, Mongoose and the products and the games that you have sold and everything and how you've gotten to where you are now. Mm -hmm. So, Oh, that's great. Thank you for having me. So, hey, if you don't mind, why don't we, why don't we step back? And so, um, broad question, but how did you get into this? This, this world of gaming and RPGs and publishing and everything like that. Because yeah. I find that to be fascinating. That's not something that, you know, you see a lot of, especially with the success of the company. Uh, well, you're going to have to go back till I was about, what, eight, nine years old in primary school. Started off with the old fighting fantasy and lone wolf game books. Um, uh, a teaching assistant saw what uh, me and my friends were doing and... Um, said, uh, I've got a game you, I, I think you'll like, and uh, it was Tunnels and Trolls. Um, immediately ran out and got the red box Dungeons and Dragons, and that was the start of everything. Um, although, if you, if, I suppose if you want to be technical, it might have started off when I was about four years old when I saw Star Wars for the first time. Um, I, I, one of my earliest memories, I actually remember sitting in the cinema, seeing the Stormtroopers, and that absolutely never left me. Yeah. at all so it's uh let's blame blame george george lucas <laughs> i think that starts with both of us because it sounds to yeah. me like we're close in age because that was around the same time yep. that we were the same age yeah so how did you end up so so obviously you started gaming but what brought you to the point where um you started mongoose publishing well, it, it took a bit of a false start, actually. I mean, you get to the end of your schooling, and I did um, uh, did the first step of uh, higher education, and they tell you, well, you've you've got to go out and get a job now. And mm -hmm. I thought, well, no one told me that. <laughs> um, so I, I kind of um, bummed around a bit, um, uh, fell into IT and started fixing computers for a living, but I always had in the back of my head I'd be doing something else. Uh, and it got to a point where um, my oldest friend had just left the army. He'd just got into, uh, I think it was 3G phones at the time. He didn't like it very much. Yeah. Um, I was ready to leave the world of uh, world of computers. It was never really my thing anyway. Um, and I said to him, um, hey, I've, I've heard about this uh, D20 license thing. Do you, do you want to start a company? We knocked around some ideas and 
it kind of that's basically as simple as it was wow wow and then oh oh, go ahead jace go ahead i was just gonna ask but because was your at university where did you do tech or did you do writing what i didn't get to university um uh, I don't have a degree at the moment. I'm, I'm doing a, a degree right now, but oh, wow. um, no, I, I didn't go to university. I just did what uh, what we call A levels over here. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, but um, no, I mean, uh, Alex, um, uh, my business partner, Alex was um, uh, had been uh, a captain in the uh, British Army in the Signals. Yeah. Um, I had been monkeying around with um computers as i say i had been yeah, yeah. i had to do, uh, did a bit of freelance writing for uh games okay. workshop um oh. if anybody's using uh, a death company dreadnought by the way you're welcome um <laughs> but we alex and i didn't know anything about publishing at oh, all that's incredible uh the longest thing i had ever written was uh, a four thousand word uh magazine article uh, and all of a sudden, we had to figure out how to print books, who to sell them to. I had to figure out how to write an 18,000-word, 32-page book, which at the time was just immense to me. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so we were starting with um, very much a standing start and figuring it out mm-hmm. as we as we went along. We made plenty of missteps, but... Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I mean, in business, as long as you can survive them. Yeah, and I mean, you must have been in your 20s, I'm guessing, when this started up, early 20s. Yeah, 20, 27, 28. When oh, I started, so, I think. so, okay, so again, because we're all seemingly within about a year of each other in terms of age. So, you just look so just, much younger, is all. Well, thank oh, you. I yeah. haven't heard that in a very long time. <laughs> um, uh, I'll take it. But, but, but seriously, though, I like, I look at what's going on in in the uk in terms of gaming and it just looks like it's exploding like it's just there's so much coming i mean here in the states like the 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 publishers and the games that are coming out of the uk it's like wow there must be so much going on there i mean is there was there when i mean was there even a market when you guys got started had it caught on oh god yeah um okay I mean, gaming has always been very strong in the UK. I mean, it's it's strong all, all over Europe. You've got the uh, the different strands of gaming. You've got your miniatures gaming, your RPGs, your board games, your card games. So, um, without without wanting to pigeonhole entire countries, I mean, Germany yeah, always yeah. very well known for its board games, sure. for example. Um, in the UK, um, I mean, the UK the big gaming thing is uh, miniatures with, of course, uh, Warhammer oh. and Games Workshop. Okay. Okay. Uh, and that drives a lot of gaming in yeah. the UK. I mean, every major town and city has a, its own Games Workshop store or Warhammer store, as they call them now. Wow. Um, and you've got a lot of other smaller uh, miniatures companies. Most of them, um, are, they're not one man bands, but, you know, a handful of people. Yeah. Uh, but you're starting to see the rise of uh, larger miniatures games companies now. Um, the, the one that comes to mind is Warlord Games, um, started by a um, couple of uh, XGW guys. Um, they do all the historical gaming in this country now. Oh, okay. um, but when we started, I think I'm right in saying the only, <laughs> I've got to be careful, I was going to say the only um, RPG company of note. That is really <laughs> nasty to say because there were there were a bunch of yeah, um, yeah. others. I'm, I'm, their names are going through my heads now. But the one people always focus on was Hogshead Publishing, which at the time had the license to do Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay um so uh i mean yeah that was the market that was the uk market we were selling into but we always knew right from the start we'd have to sell into um uh, north america and europe and australia absolutely so um that's that's how we started all our um uh, business planning before we printed anything we made sure we could sell into other countries wow how did you end up um you know, partnering and you've, you've obviously partnered with other organizations and, and, you know, licensed um, and worked with those, um, you know, like with Traveler and so on. How did you end up moving into kind of that arena and what kind of caught your attention to do that? The, I mean, we started off with the, with the D20 license, um, technically a license, but there's no royalties and you do your own thing with it, Mm -hmm. uh, with it anyway. But um, 
I mean, we, at the time, we hit the market like an absolute bullet. I mean, we came late to the D20 party. We were about a year behind everyone else. But um, uh, for, from various factors, we we went in like a rocket and things started to get doing very well, very well, very quickly. Um, and there was a time when we were vaguely aware of licensed games. They, of course, they've been done in the um, in the industry before, but... Um, certainly not as much as in the past like 10, 15 years. Uh, so we just, Alex, my business partner and I, Alex, just started talking um, and uh, started bouncing my ideas. Do you want to do a license for this? Do you want to do one for that? And we mentioned Judge Dredd. We did a little bit of checking and we discovered that the, uh, the owners of Judge Dredd um, were just in uh, the uh, city north of us, like about 20, 25 miles cool. away. So we got a phone call. I uh, got a meeting with the um, Jason Kingsley, the guy who owns a company called Rebellion, which owns 2080 and Judge Dredd. Turns out he's an old role player. Uh, we got uh, we got on very well with him um, and got uh, a license with very easy terms um, in that uh, same meeting. Um, oh. at the Soon after that, we started talking to Warner Brothers, which is a very different kettle of fish. But uh, on the strength of what we've done with Judge Dredd, we managed to get the license for uh, Babylon 5. And that's when things really started yeah. to take off. How does one simply approach a, a, a giant like Warner Brothers? It's all about it's all about names. You've got to know who to talk to. You can't just, uh, in many cases, you can't just phone Warner Brothers up and say, hey, I want to talk to a licensing person because the first right. thing the reception is going to say to you, well, who do you want to talk to? I'm not going to tell you the names of the people you need to talk to. So you need mm -hmm. to do your digging around your exp uh, mm -hmm. exploration. LinkedIn is great for that. And there's various licensing shows you can go to. But once you're in the room, um, I think the first thing you've got to remember, unless you've got an old role player on the other side, they're not going to have a clue what it is you do for a living. Right. Um, but that's where the um, the Judge Dredd game came in uh, very handy. Yeah. We could say, to them, look, this is what we do. This is what it's going to look like. It's just going to say Babylon 5 on it. Mm -hmm. um, and that was sufficient to Im impress them. Uh, they start throwing some figures. Well, we want to see this many tens of thousands of pounds on the table before we uh, seriously start looking. If you can say fine, yep, no, that that's no problem. That gets their attention. Very interesting. <laughs> and then you've also partnered, excuse me, like with other gaming companies. Um, and you know, like obviously, I keep coming back to it just because I'm so enthralled with with Traveler. Yeah. Um, yeah. You partnered with with Mark Miller, and. Um, you know, and his new gaming company now to produce, in effect, you know, like a partner product. I don't know the best way to put it. It's it's really the main Traveler product that's out now. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to play Traveler, you're going to play Traveler from Mongo's second edition. Yeah. Um, how did that all come about? Um, it's just one of those things. Um, I managed to <laughs> see the criteria for any of our games, whether they're licensed or not, is that there has to be at least one person in the mongoose office um who's absolutely passionate about the game yeah. it's nice money is never really the the criteria we figure that if we do something we like then there should be mm -hmm. a number of people out there that will also like it mm -hmm. um and up to now that's proved um true enough that we we can run a business <laughs> um but no for um I mean, Traveller was the third RPG I started playing. Um, I've always had some delight in telling Mark that I started playing Traveller when I was 12 years old. <laughs> um, uh, so um, I managed to track him down, get his phone number, gave him a call, uh, said, um, uh, hey, um, we want to do, this is Mongoose, we, want to, we would like to do uh, a new edition of Traveller. And he goes, uh, he says, oh, uh, well, I'm just about to release my new T5 uh, magnum opus. Um, so I said, oh, sorry for troubling. He goes, well, no, 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 hang on. Let's let's not be hasty. Let's talk about it. Um, and we came up with a deal and we do Traveller now. Wow. Yeah, I just, I find it interesting because I know that, that T5 is out there. Um, that is just, I mean, that is, like you said, a magnum opus. That's an encyclopedia. But um I have just found just looking at prior products and everything like that, how you put them out, what's inside is really rich and really well done. 
you know, binding and covers are really well done. It's a really quality product. Um, you know, did you have some ideas kind of when you were going into this from a publishing perspective, independent of the IP, um, of the type of product, how you wanted to, to produce and publish it? Were there kind of some baselines in terms of how you wanted that product to look? No, not really. Um, I mean, it's it's all driven by the IP. Um, that kind of um, that dictates demands what we need to uh, to do for it. For example, um, a few years ago we released the Sea of Thieves RPG based on the um, on Microsoft's video game. Uh, and there's all sorts of ways we could have done that. I mean, we could use the Traveler rules um, mm -hmm. uh, and just like layered a pirate game on top of it. But it wouldn't have been the Sea of Thieves game, um, which is not, uh, shall we say, not long on um, realism, where you're uh, boarding enemy ships by putting yourself in your own cannon. Um, so an RPG <laughs> needed to reflect that. Um, there's no death in the um, oh, wow. uh, in the video game. You just go in the sin bin for uh, the 30 seconds. So the RPG has to do the same thing, or it's not um, mm -hmm. it's not Sea of Thieves. But all of that means, uh, I mean, at the moment we've got the the main box set, and we've got um, uh, another campaign book out for it. Mm -hmm. But that's um, what we all we've released for it over a period of five years. Um, now, if it was um, a very serious fantasy uh, pirates game, then we would have had a ship's book, a nation's book, an equipment book. Here's a book sure. for the zombies and islands and things. Um, but that's not what Sea of Thieves is. So you you mold your your publishing schedule around what the IP requires, not not the other way around. Mm -hmm. So right before we clicked record, we were talking about something relevant, something adjacent, and maybe we can talk about it now a little deeper. So Brad and I, you you know this, Matthew. Brad and I, I mean, we've been intrigued by mongoose for some time, and I mean travel we've courtesy of brad we've had like a three-week background discussion on text about just specifically traveler because i i'd heard of it and i'd i'd heard part of like a a, a live playthrough but I, I i don't really listen to a lot of that stuff and so um it was like on the periphery of my awareness but i didn't know much about it at all other than i'm always interested in sci-fi and and especially kind of crunchy and detailed and brad's like okay so you know here's the data dump and we've just been talking and and i've been increasingly intrigued but it was when brad sent me the email of your letter to the company saying here's here's who we are here's where we're going i mean all the product stuff was there but here's it was just such a lovely transparent uh honest humane thing to write and this was coming out of a company this is coming out of of a game publishing company and like like meeting you now uh, albeit across the pond and on tech you sounded the same in that letter you wrote which i think really says something and when when brad sent that to me and we talked about it it's like now we just have to talk to you because this is fascinating because this is hopefully potentially taking the industry or at least bits of the industry in a direction that at least here in the States, we're not seeing. And we certainly don't see it in the business landscape writ large on the, on quite, quite the, the opposite when a corporation is legally a person, when, when it's all about uh, price and, and cost and investors and, and profit um, to read, to read yours. It's like, okay, so like if Google had spent more, my opinion only, if Google as a company had, or whatever we call it now, had spent more time talking about its people and less time talking about the toys in the office, like this could have changed the world because of their scope. And then we see your letter to the company. It's like, well, son of a gun, this is incredible. So we would love it if you just kind of share your thoughts about what was the impetus for that? Why are you even, why are you even doing that i mean you kind of end the letter with like and at some point this has to be turned over and it's not about me and it's like god that's just that's such forward thinking yeah there's well, there's kind of like you talk about the genesis fit there's kind of two answers to that um the first is very simple um a few years ago um i mean before this we we were like any other small company mm -hmm. um you know we say we look after the staff we say well we're a bit of a family here but um to be fair we're probably 
not much different from any other companies. And so, uh, you know, every Christmas people uh, get their bonuses and mm -hmm. it's not it's not a huge amount. It's not nothing, but it's not huge. Um, but a few years ago, um, we'd had an unusually good month. Um, uh, just various things all come together at the same time. And I looked at the, the balance in the uh, main account of the bank and I thought, well, why not just give, I mean, this was like in June or July or something. I said, well, why not give um, um, a bonus out to everyone? And um, it was modest enough. It was like, um, uh, I think it was like 200, 250 quid or something. Um, but it suddenly hit me. Um, that cost, we don't have a huge number of employees. So that cost, that cost the company nothing. I mean, the company did, would not notice on that month, that amount of money going out. But to the individual employee, um, that extra two or 300 quid in the pocket, above and beyond what you were expecting. So you've already plotted out with your bills and your rent and everything. Mm -hmm. And this just comes out the blue on top. That makes, um, does make all the difference. It does make a difference. Yes. So I started thinking, um, going further ahead with that. Every time we have a good month, let's have a, a bonus like that. If we have a very good month, let's have a bigger bonus. Um, and it gets easier when you've got um, things like um, uh, the Kickstarters, um, where you do have a, a block of money coming in and you know where it's all going to be allocated. And you've got this much left afterwards. You can divide that up um, between the employees. You don't. <laughs> this is the trick. You don't need to keep all of it yourself. You, you just you just don't need that. Um, but uh, I mean, this all also got me thinking um, in terms of not just rewarding people, but giving them more responsibilities, because you, you can reward people in ways other than just uh, giving them money. You can give them um, uh, more control over their lives. So they're deciding what they want to do and when and how it all fits in with the rest of the company. And you can just feel a lot calmer about what you're doing on a day to day basis. And this got me thinking about a conversation I had like 40 years before with um, when I was a, a tiny kid, um, mm -hmm. my father used to run his own uh, business and a small exhaust fitting firm. And he was doing very well out of it. But so I said to him, well, why don't you open, you got this garage place in, in, uh, in your hometown. Why don't you open up another, another place in the next town in the next town, have a chain. You could be mm -hmm. this big wealthy tyrant guy. Um, and he says, uh, well, no, there's no point doing that because I'd have to get somebody else to run that other garage and they would never do as good a job as I. And for decades, I thought that was a good answer until it suddenly hit me. No, that's that's a flaw. It meant the whole business revolved around just one person. And anything, if anything happened to him and it did, uh, the whole business would just get wiped out almost overnight. So it's it's kind of like a two two prong thing. Firstly, make people's lives better because why not? I'm responsible for them. Let's try and make them, you know, happy. Um, uh, and two, also build resiliency into the company, and that's that's just good sense. I think to that point, because you're being so modest about this, what stood out, I think, to both of us in the letter, it wasn't the notion of let's make bonuses regular because like you said a little bit really can make a difference you're not saving the world but you're helping people and it, it, they feel it and they appreciate it it's it they recognize it but i think what really stood out to us is uh what you just hinted at that uh employees in the company are regularly cycling through different roles different experiences that you're you're building human capital uh, across mm -hmm. you know you might be hired or tasked with x but down the road, if you're interested, there's a potential for a Y or a Z. Doesn't mean you have to stay there. But I mean that that's kind of unheard of from what we've seen. Um what what was the well, it, goes, it goes on an, yeah, it goes on another level as well. Um I mean, for example, not everyone with the best will in the world, not everyone's got a good head for numbers. Right. Um and even um simple stuff, um looking at the uh, various counts every day, looking at the totals, totaling them up so you get a big figure at the end. Um, that could be a strain for people, uh, especially, you know, nine o'clock on a Monday morning. Um, so not everyone will necessarily be in complete control of all the accounts. 
but I do make sure everybody can understand them. So right. when um, uh, an employee who does know what they're talking about on the account side, when they stand up in front of um, the whole team on a Monday morning says, this is what's happened over the past week. This is where things have been moved. This is what um, how much has been sold. Um, everyone at least understands something out of that. Um, so everyone, ev everyone's got a stake in it that, that way. Yeah, I did. I did my graduate program on this, and there's a theory out there. McClellan writes this theory of leadership, and it's and it's funny how you were talking about this exactly. Everyone has. I'll use my language. Everyone has their own fuel. Um, what drives them? Um, and in many cases, it's not always fiscal. Um, for some people, they like to have that increased responsibility or special projects or things like that. You don't see that um, in American business as a whole. So that's what really caught my attention is this idea that you're empowering your team members if they have the skill set they want to do it um, to learn and to grow. And let's be honest, these days more than ever, yeah, extra money in the pocket is great. All of us could use that. Um, but what beyond that will drive people? And what you're doing is, and that's what caught my attention where I was like, wow, I mean, I haven't encountered a company yet that um, really does that and thinks about that. So, you know, again, not to, not to sound like I'm patronizing, but kudos for this because um, it's really important. And I think that's a progression in, in the business world that needs to happen. Jason and I have talked about this, um, you know, well, there are know, companies the out there like like Google's original mantra was do no evil. Let's let's be honest. They haven't necessarily followed that all that well. Um, that's not yours, but you're doing that um, and you're producing great product with that as a result, because you're empowering folks to feel like they have a stake. You know, they have a true stake. Yeah. Um, I mean, they've it's, it's not just metaphorical. Um, uh, I mean, some some way down the road um when they're ready and when i'm ready um they they will actually own the company as well so all this is kind of like uh, in preparation for that but um uh, i mean it it, it it you can get them shaping their own environment in so many different ways i mean at basic level if you've got people editing and laying out books um in the old days i used to being that build this big chart months down one side people's names at the top and a person x does this book on this month and it will come out here i don't do that anymore i just say right um here's a sheet it's got all the titles that um, we've commissioned so far this is when we think the manuscripts are going to come in and when they're going to be edited you decide which projects you want to do and when um and there's i mean of course there's um uh, there's always some caveats like um you can't have it so uh for three months nothing comes out and then on month four eight books all come out so it's a bit of jiggering but on the whole people get to choose which projects they want to work on if there's something they're really burning to do they can do it um uh, but that goes to um, other aspects of um, the company as well I mean, we had um you might have seen on the stage the mongoose thing we had a new kitchen uh, fitted. I didn't choose that <laughs> kitchen. That was all down to them. Um, and uh, when we cool. when we finally get round to uh, doing the rest of the uh, the office, um, which badly needs it, but um, uh, basically we need to levitate lots of stuff off the floor because I, I don't want to move it. <laughs> um, they're they're going to have the, uh, the the principal deciding vote in that. When we we just brought somebody um, uh, a new recruit on board for uh, graphic design, um, I mean, when somebody comes to an interview with us, um, they're normally here for two or three hours because I do the the regular interview thing. Mm -hmm. But then I uh, take them next door and they sit down with everybody else in the company and they will just chat, which is it's half conversation, half properish interview. Mm -hmm. um, but it's being a two way process. Um, so uh, people who come here can see is this kind of place that i really want to fit into and we, we do a really good job of selling the company so the answer is normally yes um but also uh the existing staff get to uh see these people decide whether they want to work with them or not and again nine times out of ten unless there's something really odd going on i won't be the one who decides who's going to be employed it's all the other employees decide which one they want to go for yeah well wow.
Well, let me let me take a little side trip here. I'm going to ask the the question that Brad typically asks, but I I, I don't know when you're going to get to it, so I'm just going to ask. You're running a company, uh, and running it in such such an interesting, novel, important way. Do you still have time to write? Do you yes. do you okay? okay so sad, two parts. Do you have time to write? What do you like to write? Do you have time to ever play? What do you like to play? We have a rule here at Mongoose. We usually keep it, not always. Um, Friday afternoons, we every Friday, we down tools and we play games. Nice. Um, we've been playing, um, actually, it's been, we've been doing Redbox Basic D&D for uh, the past month. Okay. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to have a, a short traveler um, one off that will take two or three weeks. Um, so, yeah, we, uh, gaming's kind of mandated. Uh, nice. here yeah yeah um uh, and um sorry what was the other one writing right away you writing, said yes yeah. Yeah. yeah um i these days uh, we don't employ any admin staff here at all um oh. what happens is uh, either the admin bot completely automated or we share the uh the load so if um uh, if you have a problem with a mail order from us, you send uh, a message to the customer service. It's going to be a graphic designer or editor who ends up answering it. Interesting. Because um, we, we spread the load between us and it takes um, somebody maybe 10, 15 minutes a day. Um, right, uh, right. Same with handling all the uh, the account side of things as well. Um, so I'm still doing a lot of the admin, but it's gradually getting shared out um, um, amongst everyone else. I mean, everyone here uh, is now capable of running the company, ju not just on a day to day or week to week basis, but they could probably do it on a month to month basis now. Wow. Um, so it's well, we, we need to solidify that. And um, then I need to start baking the strategic thinking um into uh into them but if if something would happen to me for any length of time the, the company is not going anywhere now um a lot of my time beyond that is spent either um <laughs> chasing new opportunities whatever that may be whether it's um looking at your marketing site or a license yeah, or yeah. chatting to writers or what have you um a lot of my time is spent um editing still um but every now and again i manage to uh write what well, one one of the things i've been doing is every now and again i'll say to them right uh just pretend i'm not here this week i'll go over to the other side of the office and you don't talk to me at all uh, unless you know the building's actually on fire or something uh and they'll run the uh the company as they see fit uh during that time um and i get to write during those periods <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I've, I've just um, re recently finished off two Traveller books. Um, one with um, uh, that's full of uh, adventure car ships, so 2,000 tons or less, um, what people generally uh, use during the games. And the small craft catalogue as well. Nice. That sounds like so much fun. See, we, we, I mean, our audience can't see you, but Matthew just—he just looks so happy right now as he's describing this process. <laughs> and there's a little bit of as soon as you were talking about ship, there's a little bit of drool right here because I'm, yeah. I'm on Brad to be clear. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. ready. I'm ready. So yeah, you beat me to it, Jace. That was going to yeah. be the the next question yeah. I ask is is what you're gaming now do you just out of curiosity it's something that jason and i talk about and we periodically ask folks um you know metaphorically what's on your desk from a reading perspective um or do you have time for any reading and it, it doesn't even have to be role-playing we have yeah. folks talk about history or whatever the case may yeah be. um uh yeah i mean if you if you write already you've got to read and you ought to read uh broadly as well um i mean on my reading desk at the moment i've just finished um um, uh, a Peter Zihan book, um, his new geopolitics one. I've got uh, a Warhammer novel on the uh, go at the moment. And I've um, uh, earlier today, I've been revising the Traveller Adventure I'm going to be running tomorrow. That's, that, that's a nice diverse reading list. <laughs> that's excellent. Personal curiosity, are you using one? Are you? Is this adventure that you're doing something that's published or is it something that you're just building right now that's going to be... It, no, it, it is one that's been published. It's actually um, a, uh, one we did for our first edition of Traveller. 
I can't tell you what it is because I don't want our, my players to know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, no, no. Sorry, I, no, no, we no, never no. asked for spoilers. That's great. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, yeah. it. I before we let you go because you've been so giving of your time, and we know it's it's a lot later in the day there than it is here. Oh no, you're um, you're welcome. Oh no, no, thank you. Um. Uh, and and if, if you don't, if this isn't a, an appropriate question, shoot it down. But in talking with a number of other just publishers, line editors, things like that here in the States, we we hear a couple common threads in terms of the industry. And I'm curious at Mongoose, um, how much of your writing is done with staff in-house versus freelancers? Uh, in the in the old days, it was um, pretty much all in house. We yeah. had um, full time writers employed. We we had like five or six of them at uh, yeah. one point, I think. Um, these days, um, we do a little bit of writing in house. I mentioned the two books, and yeah. uh, there's a lady here, Bella, who's um, working on a, a brand new game that you'll, you'll likely see next year yeah. um, at the moment. Um, I'd like to do more in house because it's it's what yeah. we enjoy doing. Yeah. Um, but um we have um four or five uh absolutely solid uh what we call our frontline writers mm -hmm. um who do who are doing the bulk of the writing at the moment. Um mm -hmm. and we got some others on the periphery and yeah, mm -hmm. maybe we can bring them in to be a, a mainline writer at some point or not. We'll see. Yeah, that's neat. Yeah. yeah, just purely, just from an industry standpoint, purely curious. This is one of those things that that Brad and I, Brad and I talk about uh, offline a lot. It's just because there's so much coming out from from Mongoose and these others, and and we know that. I mean, like you look at the WGA strike here in the states in terms of of of, of writing and um and Hollywood and whatnot, and and we just we've been picking up on these really common threads. It's just a difficult industry for a lot of writers, right? Across, across genres, across industries. And it's always interesting, just how is it actually being done at these, these companies who put out these products we admire so much? Um, Cause we've yet to hear anybody say, oh yeah, we just farm it out because we don't care. It's always, it's what you said, right? Some version of that, of this is what we want to be doing. And this is how we try to do it, which is very, very interesting. Yeah. And you're and you're very transparent too on your site showing release schedule, which I which oh, is yeah. very cool. So you know well that 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 in itself can be a work of fiction at times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> again, again, in the old days, we we were very, very good. We were able to tell you what day a book was gonna come out six months um before it actually appeared. Um now we we just specify a month this book's gonna come out mm -hmm. in. Uh yeah, it might come out in that month. Um, but it doesn't come out until we're ready for it to come out. Yeah. So um, right. I mean, we got one at the moment, the um, World Builders Handbook for Traveller is coming out at the end of this month. Yeah, that was supposed to be last month, but it needed some more work. So we keep plugging away with it, uh, way at it until it's done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even even if it flexes, I think most people understand that. And, and oh, since yeah. qu quality product is, is important, um, if it's if it's pushed out a little bit, it's because you're not going to release yeah. something that's not quality product. Well, that's I mean that's at the end of the day that's that's everything. I mean people may get um a little bit stressed because they've um, set their heart on reading book X or month Y, um, yeah, yeah. but you you've got to keep things back until they're in a better condition. Um, I mean you can see the the poorer sides are not doing that by what's happening with video games mm -hmm. at the moment. Interesting. Were were you guys? Um, I mean, I have to assume the answer is yes. But were you guys, or maybe I should ask, to what extent were you affected by the pandemic in terms of you know printing, distribution, things like that? Did did it make a big difference for you? Well, there's there's a number of things about that. Firstly, we we go into lockdown um, over here in the UK, uh, and I actually put uh, I put mongoose on lockdown two weeks before the British government get, uh, wow. did because I could see what was going to happen. So yeah, let's yeah. let's get it sorted out now. Um, and the first thing we noticed that uh, product productivity went sh uh, rocketing up. Wow. Um, we got an amazing amount of work done, um, and it did start leading to conversations about yeah, well, yeah. why do we have an office? Yeah. Uh, I mean, if um, if we get rid of the office, everyone gets an instant uh, pay rise and a decent one at that. Um, but we did, we've, we, in the end, we decided that 
um, video chats are all well and good, but the ability to just turn around to your desk, tap someone on the shoulder and say, here, what do you think about this on my yep. screen right now? What are your immediate comments about this? Yeah. On a creative level, um, it's mm. just so difficult to beat that. Um, yep. Uh, I mean, there are aspects of the job that could very well be done um, out of an office uh, and occasionally we do them, but just being able to talk to each other. And we've made it a nice place to be. <laughs> um, I mean, in terms of printing and distribution, uh, that just died overnight and it still yeah. has not recovered. Okay. Um, and it's still about maybe a four month turnaround from sending a book off to print to actually getting in your hands. We're, we're printing the new paranoia at the moment and they're telling us yeah. they can get it to us in about two and a half uh, months. I don't really believe that, but yeah. if, if they can, that means things might be back to normal again. <laughs> uh, yeah, we haven't brought up paranoia. I, I got to say, God, that looks good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's that game is absolutely unique. Um, yeah. uh, I mean, we, we, we occupy a bit of a, an odd space in the, in the gaming market. I mean, I, uh, I generally go around that we really don't have any right. competitors because yeah. um, I mean with with Traveller yeah there are other science fiction games but Traveller is the granddaddy of them all and it is has rock solid foundations yeah. um, so you might get things that um, uh, now and again I'm, I'm thinking perhaps like the uh, the 40k RPGs mm -hmm. uh, that can outsell Traveller but Traveller is going to be around when those games are long gone yeah um, and uh, I mean paranoia uh, if anybody wants to write a competitor paranoia good luck to them good luck. people have been <laughs> trying for 40 years now it's I, I, that, I that really was lightning in a bottle i have i have i and i i'm not gonna walk away I, i'm looking at my bookshelf uh, in the office here i <clears throat> i've got my paranoia from i must i don't know i must have been in maybe high school may, maybe maybe secondary um and i want to say it's around the second printing i don't yeah. I don't know my history well enough. And I never, I don't think I ever, Brad and I, we actually haven't talked about this. I don't think I've ever played it. That was one of those books that I just wanted to read because it was brilliant. It was like, you know, this especially, this was like when when Hitchhiker's the Guide to the Galaxy was, was you know, in, in print, right? Where we, we were all reading the stuff like this as kids. And it's like that mentality of, of oh my god this is like this is my sense of humor internal like this is how life actually works just with only one computer just just brilliant and and the the stuff that we've been following from from all of you of what's going to be coming up even the fact you put out a little video had me had me laughing yeah. out loud like these these are my people yeah. oh watch <laughs> we got another paranoia video coming out in uh, um two or three months keep an, keep an eye out for that one yeah definitely <laughs> Oh, so that's one good. of those. That's one of those games that Jason and I have on our our list to to play, just, just because it, it's yeah. it's it's unique and and it's funny and it's different. Yeah. So, um, we will put because I think it's important in the, in the show notes. One of the things that we'll put is yep. a link to uh, the State of the Mongoose 2022, a post mm -hmm. that's out on the forums that you host. Mm -hmm. You host your own forums so that people can talk to you. Yep, um, very cool directly and i know i've been out on reddit i've been in other places and you're and the team um are responding directly i mean i've seen it out there you're responding directly um i even when i just recently talked with 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 the su support cassie is the one i'm calling cassie out in the middle of a recording but she was she was phenomenal um and customer service is another one of those things that's that's kind of been a struggle here in the states especially so mm -hmm. to see someone who was passionate in email about 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 something just it made my day um it oh, represents and, the company yeah I mean, it's, it's yeah it says it yeah you put your it's best foot forward got, um, it's, it's, it's also i'd like to think um uh something genuine in that um uh, as well it's not just yeah. training to be nice to customers um mm -hmm. She seemed passionate about it because she is. Um, she these are books that she's worked on herself, um, and it's uh, a company that um, she's very much got a part of a, a stake in. Um, and uh, I mean, just on a practical level, she understands if customers are happy, that means there's every chance she gets a bigger bonus at the end of the month. 
Yeah. But still, it's but the but the ownership, the the sense of integrity, the opportunity to to evolve as individuals in a company. That's sorry that that's a model, Matthew. That a lot more of these companies in and out of the arena should be following. We need that in our world right now. The thing I've thought about this, the thing you've got to do. I mean, there's two sides to this. The first thing is you've got to get the people who own the company, and you'll never do this, incidentally, if you've got outside shareholders. That will kill kill this dead. Right. Um, that's not to say you can't have a big company operating as um, uh, in this fashion. I and mean, we've got um, um, a big company called um, John Lewis and Waitrose over here, which is a big supermarket and department okay. store. That's all employee-owned, but uh, I digress. Um, the first thing you've got to do is convince the people running the companies, owning the companies, that they do not need a nine-bedroom house. They, I mean, if they can have a seven-bedroom house, that, that will be just fine. Right. Um, they yeah. don't need a huge yacht. They don't need right. the six horses. A one horse, you only ride one horse at a time. You, if you want horses, one horse, come on. Yeah. Um, which means you have a lot to spread around and you can invest that into uh, into the company and you can invest that into your staff, which is the same as investing in the company. And if you invest in your staff enough, then they're not going to leave you. Um, so first, you have to convince company owners to do that. And that is going to be such a hard sell. The other uh, the other thing you can do is tackle it from the employee's side, because um, if um uh, you're working for a company in the same field that doesn't do this and you realize that not only is there a better um, life on the other side of the fence but you're actually going to get paid more as well yeah. yeah you can start dragging staff away from um, other companies and maybe those other companies have to be nice to their staff in return you raise the, the tide that way um i don't think that's possible either <laughs> <laughs> Sounded so good. <laughs> I'd like to think though that it could. I mean, like you said, that's a it's a hard sell and a hard do, especially when when you know, right now it's it's for better or worse, it's corporate profit. It's just well, it's, I mean, think think of a smaller company. You've got um uh, five, 10, 15 employees, and you've got one guy running it, or maybe two guys running mm -hmm. it. Um, so yeah, I mean, first you have to convince them. That um, you know, you don't need the Aston Martin. Jaguars are, are just as good. In fact, they're probably better. Won't break down as often. Um, the problem you're going to hit there is if they have children, um, because they've got this thing in their head: I'm going to build this empire. I'm going to pass yeah. it on to my children, and um, my name will live forever, or whatever it is. Yeah. And you're going to have trouble convincing them that they shouldn't give the. Uh, company to their kids they give it to their employees instead and that's i haven't found a winning argument for that yet yeah unless they don't like their kids in which case it's quite easy i suppose <laughs> yeah, I, I, i'm not even gonna i <laughs> so i it, it thoughts of asking you about about king charles come to mind but i'm just not even gonna go there because that's a whole different discussion <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, we've we've run we've run. I'm trying to dance over that one. Yeah, um, I think it's fascinating. Yeah, thank you so much for the time. Um, you're welcome. It's such a treat I, to talk to you. Seriously. Yeah. yeah, and and again, you're you're talking from from Britain over there. We're here on Central Time in the states, so you're doing this at the end of your day, mm. and um, you've been very gracious with your time and in, in all of your communications and, mm -hmm. and the products are oh, man. first class. Um, and so, you know, I recommend folks go out and take a look at them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't, we aren't shills, but I, it's a great, it's a great product. We were a little bit late to the game getting it, um, yeah. but better late than ever. Yeah. And we'd love to have you on again at oh, some God, point, yeah. you know, and, be and talk Absolutely. about this. Oh, thank you. So, yeah. We'll, uh, well, maybe we'll, um, we'll plan to reach out, uh, post paranoia, not our personal paranoia, but the, the game. Um, I, I have to imagine there's going to be something to talk about with that. I'm really curious to see how that will be received. Obviously there's been a cult following. I mean, it's been a classic since it came out, but, mm. but what it looks like that you're releasing online, it, it does look like it could speak to a much, much broader audience than back 
back, you know, in the day. Oh, we'll have to see. But um, yeah, I'll be happy to chat with that. The uh, uh, I think I uh, like talking about games as much as I do as uh, actually producing them. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Such a pleasure to meet you. Yeah. Thank you. You too. Matthew, thank you. It was a distinct yeah. and an absolute pr- pleasure to have you on. Yes, and yes. Um, again, selfishly for me, hearing about um, the organization and how mm-hmm. you know how it's run and everything like that um, gives me hope. It's out there, even though it's a it's a company overseas from us. I still think it's an example company. Um, I think you know if it continues to permeate in the RPG world. Um, not that we are um, evangelists or advocates per se, but I think we both agree that it, the direction he's taking that company is the direction that business should be going. Without, I mean, without, without question. And I, uh, yeah, I don't think you can call me an evangelist of anything per se, but we are advocates about yeah, this. Yeah, bad I term, mean, but you know yeah, what I but, mean. But, you know, all kidding aside though, um, we are advocates for this. I mean, you and I talk about this all the time and have for a long time in terms of business, you know, you guiding me on these topics and then increasingly on the podcast and in talking with others, looking at how these businesses are run. And, you know, it's a very interesting time. Like we mentioned briefly in the interview, um, it's not long ago that uh, the Paizo union got on its feet. Um, uh as of this recording, in all honesty, we 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 don't because we're recording well in advance. Um, we don't know where the WGA strike will be as of this episode dropping. But this stuff matters, and and like you said to Matthew, this is not first and foremost about money, right? It goes back to to Herzberg's theory of, of, of motivation in the workplace that you and I talk about, that you brought up to me, which is great, that it's once there's adequate recompense, people want meaning. They want to have a sense of ownership. They want to have purpose at work. And that's, that's what he's doing. And he's, yeah. it, not unilaterally, but, but in the sense of he's got the power to do that. And he's turning that company into something that's, I mean, we would probably argue is more than just a quote unquote job or company. Yeah, and I mean, in the in the eighties, a sage once said, "You know, be excellent to each other." Uh, Bill S. Preston. So, um, <laughs> but I mean, jokes aside, I mean, you know, I, we've talked about this. You know, Google had the 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 adage, "Do no evil," um, and obviously, yeah. one could argue whether that's actually yeah. happened, whether they've stuck to that or not. But you know, just just respect. And it, you don't, it doesn't matter whether you, again, I'm going to get off my soapbox here, but whether or not you have differences and opinions on things, um, just respect each other and, and differences of opinion. I'll be quite honest with you. You know, Jason, and I have differences of opinion on all sorts of things. Um, but we've, let me rephrase that for the most part, We've always been respectful of each other. When I was a little younger, I was maybe a little more, a um, uh, little less, little more, less, yeah, a little, we'll just say well, less. a little more of a jerk. Let's just say a little more of a jerk and a little less, a little less eloquent. Um, but with age comes hopefully um, understanding and perspective. We have a lot of differences in opinion on things. Nothing that would prohibit us from communicating or being friends for thirty years. Why can't I mean? Look at what mongoose is doing um you know they're just being decent and we all just yeah, need that, that's to, the way to put it be decent so i hope if anything that comes from this is that you take a moment and just be decent to someone that you normally wouldn't necessarily give the time of day to you don't know how much that could mean so, to someone much um, like we don't know why you're listening but Thank you for being decent and giving being us being decent time and, of day. and uh, yeah yeah and if you actually text and say I listened even if you didn't that's the decent thing to do the decent <laughs> thing to do would be to download the episode even if you don't listen to it and help the download numbers oh man that went downhill so fast yeah that would be extraordinarily <clears throat> decent of you um, that's your that, fault I was I was I was in a really nice and unnecessary montage and you um, you completely obliterated it. 
but still not um, wrong. Yeah, no, you're yeah. not. But that that aside, um, thanks to Matthew and oh, again, yeah. it's just indicative of the RPG community. Um, yeah, and, we've been saying this for so long. Yeah, and just to see that, um, it literally. You know, we recorded this in the morning because there's a time difference between us. Yeah. It has made my day. Oh, yeah. I, I, just one last time uh, on behalf of both of us. Thank you so much, Matthew. Um, just the fact that we get to talk to people like like you. Um, yeah. I mean, publishers are these really successful, uh, well, publishing houses and these creators of these phenomenal games. Um, it's, you know, I was thinking about this this morning, Brad. Um Amy, you know, my, my wife, she asked me something and, and I'm like, yeah, well, she's like, what are you doing today? Uh, cause she's a teacher. And as we're recording, she's just a day and a half away from being done with the school year and not at all excited about that. And, uh, and I'm like, well, you know, uh, I'm going to write for a bit. I've got some stuff to do. And then, um, Brad and I are going to, going to record. And I just got thinking like, and I said to her, I said, the first time I said to her, I'm like, we're going to give this at least a third year. And, and I, and it's like, well, cause look at what we get out of this. Just yeah, I mean, selfishly. 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 Yeah. 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 We get to talk to people that we normally would not have had the opportunity to talk to. And that are, no. that are good, decent, again, decent, good, decent people that have bettered us by us, by them taking their time to talk to us. I think I might know what's been on your desk and on your mind lately, because in fact, the good friend you are due to a shipping snafu, you ended up sending me a couple books, a couple beautiful books. Why don't you read a bit, brother, about what's been on your mind? Yeah, so I'm going to curveball this on you. Yep. Um, shocking, shocking. I think a few weeks back, I mentioned that I had a lot of free credit from Modifius. <laughs> yes, we um, talked about that on here. <laughs> yeah. So, and it was because I just didn't track it. And so all of a sudden I logged yeah, in just that was to, the problem. to look to see when um, Lower Decks was going to uh, go into pre order. And I noticed yeah. that I had um, an extraordinary amount of, of reward points. Yeah. So I used them um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it picked up a couple games, one of which. Um, you know, I've just started to tinker with. It's called Forbidden Lands. It's one that can be done solo. Oh yeah, yeah. That's I'll have right. more about to say that in the future. It's it's um, it's a very cool and unique little environment, mm -hmm. and it's just pro to soloing. You and I have not talked about this at all. No, and it's no. one of, and, it, and no, it's because of other stuff. Yeah, right. Um, the other one is Traveler. Um, you know, that's really between that and a Star Trek gaming. Tra Traveler from Mongoose yep. Publishing, as it were. Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. those are, that's literally because um, with my wife working in our, in our office basement, I've tended to spend more time up here Yep, in my, on, in my old man chair. And um, those are the books that I literally have. I've been learning about Trek. We've been playing in a sandbox format. And like I told you, and like I mentioned before, it's going to be a while before we can get to a point where we can play Traveler. But I've been watching yeah, yeah. the idea of character creation and Traveler. If you have not, I didn't know about this. Yeah. If you have not experienced it or know anything about it, go look it up. It is one of the most unique and probably fun methods of doing a session zero character creation. Yeah. When you... You, you you would text me at some point and you're like you have to check out character creation and, and mongoose doesn't hide it like you can get online no. and you can find this people are talking about it people yeah. are writing about it and it's fascinating and to dispel the myth while it is true that in the original pre non mongoose version a pc could actually die during character creation that that is no longer the case well that's, let me clarify that oh okay it's highly unlikely the standard rules don't yes, include that's right. death. Th th there's In the a... companion, and right. I cannot remember the rule name, yeah. um, hardcore, whatever it is. Yeah, uh, yeah. They do allow you to have that yeah. back in. And yeah. there are a number of videos out there. I thought one of the best ones, now you're going to hear the truck in the background. Sorry, folks. Um, At least you're not the, backing up anymore. Yeah, this is this makes it sound real, real professional. Um, but especially you really... with the garbage 
Especially you if the really, garbage men decide to throw out a profanity or two as they hit our recycle Yeah, recycle you bins. really need to get whatever that is oiled if you're moving around like yeah, that. Yeah, that's thank you, thank yeah. you, city truck. Yeah. Um, <laughs> gosh, good grief! Actually, there's no truck people. Brad's just standing up from his old man chair. Yeah. <laughs> nice, well played. Yeah. Um, and probably a little bit true. Um, it's it hurts because it's funny, or is that yeah. the other way around? <laughs> uh, both, actually, it's funny. But, well, it's really not it's that funny both. because it hurts. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, pretty funny. But Glass Cannon had a had a session one episode. Yeah. Um, where they go through and, and the episode's almost two hours, but yeah. you get to hear with humor them mm-hmm. uh, go through character creation. Mm-hmm. And it's really well done. So that's really all that's been from an RPG perspective. There are other things, but RPG wise, that's it. What about what about you from your perspective? Well, I know STA is really the biggest one. Yeah, and I mean, and you know, we've been we've been playing, and I've had the chance to to be a, have a PC in, instead because you're jamming. But um, but but we'll save that for for later, as we promised earlier in the episode. Um, I have been thinking increasingly about Traveler again, thanks to you and the material you sent me. Um, and they're, I mean, they're just beautiful books. They're readable. So like, as soon as we're done. I'm taking my books and going upstairs before anyone else gets home and I'm just going to peruse. Um, And I never told you I'll do this on air. So the high guard you sent me, it's like this faux leather. It's like, why would they even publish it? Like, it's so fancy. Did you know that I'm I'm pleased with myself? One, it's got like the, the little aluminum or, or one of the aluminums. One one of the corners is, is gone. Yeah. And I'm like, how weird is that? So I took out packaging tape. (laughs) Oh, you and did? I, oh, yeah, because otherwise it's going to fray every yeah. time you push it onto the shelf. So I just, I very carefully wrapped it with a cup with two pieces of packaging tape. Uh, and, you know, I mean, it's barely noticeable, but now it's indestructible. Um, and and I, I have the regular version of it um, just because for me. Oh, interesting. Oh, yeah. So that, me, I didn't OCD, even realize they published both. Yeah, yeah, that would have driven you. If we had bought that like that, it it would like it, if it were a different situation, we would have sent that back. You would have sent that. Yeah, back. I, yeah. it's not my thing, and it's it's yeah. nothing against. It's not that because oh, of the no, quality. No, no. It's just stuff happens. The way I the way I organize things. Um, oh yeah. yeah, but yeah, the High Guard update book um, adds all sorts of great stuff, and the core rule book. Um, really, all you need to play the game is the core rule book. In fact, there's um, a explorer i think it's the explorer's edition yes um, which is a thinner yes. um, paperback um you know eight and a half by eight eight and a half by eleven size yeah, book yeah. that gives you the basics that's really all you would need in theory um to start playing um mm-hmm. it is not as difficult as i make it out to be it literally yeah, no, is no. just i need time because of everything else you and i are doing um oh. to be properly ready for well it, and and know? like you said so much of what we appreciate about games like Traveler is that it's just good reading. Oh yeah, it's it's good reading, it's good world building. Um, and I, I, I mean, we're, we're right. We're not saying we're not going to play. We're never going to play. There's just no urgency. I think like one one game is enough. It's kind of still amazing to me that we're even playing. One game is enough at a at, at a time. But we and can let's be honest. This. We've got yeah. we're we're continuing to play STA, and then the next on the docket is um, jumping back over and playing Modern Age. Um, age. The, oh, or, um, or maybe Fantasy Age. That's right. Fantasy Age or Modern yeah. Age. One of them. We haven't decided um, yet. You know, age stands for adventure game engine. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, and if you go to Green Running's website, you'll see um, a lot of remember. their games, and they have some killer quick starts. You, really, yeah, well they written. do. Yeah, and they're, again, their their adventures, their like quick start adventures, are solid. When we remember when we we use one of the, I think it was the Expanse quick start, and yeah. it's like, oh my god, that got dark quickly. Like yeah. it was like a legitimately thick story like there was it wasn't fluffy it was like this could literally be in a novel yeah that was yeah really well done stuff so between between those i mean that's going to probably keep us well into fall close to winter so yeah yeah yes potentially when we play it it'll probably be end of the year early 24 just because we are pretty much scheduled out yeah troy and malcolm if you're listening you know you'll you'll be getting a call as we're 
right yeah. well we'll be letting you know we're we're, we're playing again yeah because we do we want to we <laughs> we learned after the fact that um was it gritty pulp and cinematic yeah gritty was not the way to go for us yeah 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 that was that was it was, it, was, fact, it, was, it reminds Mal- me of Ron Burgundy drinking milk in Anchorman. That was a yeah. bad choice. Yeah, Ma- Malcolm, I think, actually laughed out loud Yeah. when we talked about that. He's like, well, you know why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we looked foolish. It was yeah. still fun. It was just, oh, we, yeah. we learned by by yeah. practice. We that, still, God, we love that mechanic. I, yeah, oh. we have to start, we have to start a little bit easier on us. Um, yeah, yeah. And again, the adventure game engine, the age mechanic is really mm. cool really cool yeah all right everybody um one once more uh so so pleased uh flattered really that matthew sprange would come to hang out with us for a bit uh talk to us about mongoose just um what what a cool company what an exemplary set of products uh what a what a future they have um be well stay well we will see you in a couple of weeks <laughs>